Everything we do requires energy. Even this thing requires energy. And just moving my body to the studio requires energy. And this requires energy. And even the food we eat requires energy, such as this banana. But few of us realize just how much energy goes into producing, storing, and transporting a simple banana to our plates. So to find out, join me in a game of what I like to call Bonopoly. So the journey of the banana starts in the tropical plantations far, far away. And it takes about nine months to grow into an actual banana. In all this time, it requires a huge amount of energy in the form of fertilizer, power to pump water, and fuel for the machinery. And once the banana is harvested, then all the imperfect ones are discarded and the remaining ones are washed and then picked up by a truck with a full tank of fuel. They now make their way to the warehouse, where thanks to the electricity, they are cooled at a particular temperature to make sure that their shelf life is prolonged as much as possible. They are then processed and packaged before making their way across the world either by boat or by plane, using a massive amount of energy in the form of fuel. Upon arrival, they are then unloaded, refrigerated and brought to a warehouse to ripen. They then finally make their way to our supermarkets. And here they are put on display, all powered by electricity and then hopefully sold to consumers before they get old. The long journey finally ends as they make it to our homes. As you can see, it took a massive amount of energy to bring this banana from farm to fork. So if I were to waste this banana now at the end of the journey, then I would also waste all the energy embedded within. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, 30% of all the energy we use globally is currently consumed by our food system. But why is that a problem? Well, to find out more, I spoke to Zituni Uldada, Deputy Director at the FAO. In the food systems, most of the energy use is still coming from fossil fuels. Um, there is um, an increase, um, increased use of, of renewable energy, but the use of fossil fuel, yes, is still dominating um, the, you know, the, the use of um, energy. If we look at the food system as a whole, um, it all generates greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and this is from, from multiple sources throughout the food chain. So we really need to rethink uh, about how we treat food, how we use food, and, and be aware of the stages that it went through just to arrive to us and to make sure that we, we are um, responsible. So in simple terms, the food system demands a significant amount of energy every year to produce, store and transport our food from A to B. But unfortunately, the vast majority of this energy is generated by the burning and releasing of fossil fuels, such as oil, gas, and coal. This is one of the main reasons why we're currently facing a climate crisis. Yes, there are solutions, such as switching to renewables and using food waste to create energy. But first and foremost, we should do our very best to not waste food in the first place. Thank you for watching the latest episode of our series on the impact of food waste. Have a look at our other episodes to learn more and subscribe in order to be notified when the next one comes out. Have a great day and thanks for watching.